Well, welcome back to the When I Heard This podcast. My name is Nate Robinson, and I'm here with Pastor Joseph Tillman, MDiv, soon to be D-Man. How are you doing today, sir? I'm well, man. Great. Well, good. Yeah, how are you? I never asked you that. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Okay. That's baseline. Baseline? Yeah. Just keeping it going. Just, just right there. All right. Like I've said before, <laughs> Earth objectively sucks, but I make the best of it. Right. Well, <laughs> glad, I guess. <laughs> um, go to Patreon, $5. Like, subscribe, share, comment, follow, download. Tell your friends about the show. Mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram is when I heard this podcast and X previously known as Twitter and locals is when I heard this. Joseph, today we are talking about praying. Yeah, man. And it's going to take forever. You got a lot of questions on prayer. Well, there's a lot of questions. Uh, Okay. A lot of different ways to do it or not do it. Yep, I guess so. And stuff to pray for and praying. Yeah, man. (laughs) So uh, first question. Yeah. What is prayer? So I'm going to take a really simplistic approach and just say prayer is talking to God. Okay. Okay. And so so I think prayer, like in talking to God, is either incredibly comforting that I'm able to communicate and talk with the creator of all of the universe, Mm -hmm. or prayer is one of the most insane and crazy activities one can do because if God's not real, then who are you really talking to? Yourself. Yeah. Or the wall or imaginary friend or something. So if you and I prayed at the same time, uh huh, would he be able to listen to both of us? Absolutely. Because he's because omni... he's omnipresent. Right. So even if we were in two different locations, right, he'd right. still hear us. And he is all knowing. Mm-hmm. So therefore he would know everything we are praying or even about to pray. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think we can we can use a lot of different words for prayer, right? We can talk about intercession, supplication, petitions, and all those things are valid, but I'm just going to say it's just talking to God. Well, those all sound like different things. <laughs> some of them are, and some of them aren't. I guess God knows what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think in the Christian church, we like to get real fancy with words and that right. kind of thing, too. That's, so. that's too much? Yeah. Um. Okay, what's the point? When I say a prayer, what is the what is the significance of the fact that I am doing a prayer? Well, I think probably the, the greatest significance is the fact that you're acknowledging that there is a God to, to pray to in the first place. Okay, fair. And so in your communicating with that God, you're connecting with that God. So that's probably the second most significant thing that's happening. Okay. Um. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of the main significance of it. Now, obviously, it depends on what we're praying for as far as the point of prayer. In other words, are we wanting to just be assured that God is with us? Are we are asking God to actually do something for us or for someone else? So I think that can differ. But I think the biggest thing is you're acknowledging, hey, there's a God because I am actually talking to him. And number two, that... I'm connecting with this God that apparently I can talk to. God knows what we are thinking. Uh Uh-huh. So why do I need to pray out loud? Also, does it matter how loud I pray? (laughs) Or if I whisper my Mm. prayer, does God hear me? Okay. Or if I pray in my head, does any of that matter? All right. Or what's the difference? Between all those things. Or because, you know, people apparently do it in ever, all those different types of ways. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah, they do. So, all right, let's read Matthew 6. Okay. Okay. And so in Matthew 6, it says, whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your private room Shut your door and pray to your father who's in secret. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them because your father knows the things you need 
before you ask him. And so I think that's getting to your point. If God already knows, mm -hmm. why, why pray? pray? Right. So, so I'm, let me continue on. Mm -hmm. All right. So then Jesus says, therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So I think there's a couple of things going on in regards to who we are as Christians who are followers of Jesus and why are we praying out loud? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, to be honest with you, the largest part is actually conveyed in that very first phrase when Jesus says, when you pray, you should pray like this, our Father. Okay. And I really think it's more of a, in other words, this is relational. It's a relational connection. It's a relational connection between who we are as God's sons and daughters and that he is our father. Mm -hmm. So we're connecting to him. So we're talking with him. It's like anything else in building a relationship. I actually need to talk to the person I'm in relationship with and, or communicate with them in some form or fashion. And so I think this is kind of what the, what Jesus is saying is, hey, when you pray, talk to God, talk to him. Now, I don't want it to come across as you have to talk out loud. Now, I do, I do think the Lord is calling us to, hey, if, if, if you can do so, do so great. But we also understand that there are people who cannot speak out loud for whatever reason it may be. Um, and whether they're they're mute or whether they just cannot articulate words whatever. So they just, you know, but God knows their heart. So it's not like he's demanding, if you don't talk out loud, I don't hear you. That's not the way it works. But I also think in praying in the way that Jesus models it, okay, when you pray, talk to God. He's our father. It can be, if you want to, if you want to be loud, be loud. If you want to be quiet, be quiet. I don't think the volume matters at <laughs> okay. all. And um, I was, and it's funny because in some circles, those things are valued differently. What are, What do you mean? Like the volumes. And this is kind of where it's going to get into oh. like all the cultural aspects of things. But so, for example, in some settings, when you when you call people to pray, it's going to be very subdued. Okay. It's going to be very quiet, right? Like I'm always picturing like I'm in a like a high church type setting. Let us pray. And everybody gets real quiet. And the priest even brings down, or the pastor, the, the reverend, brings down his volume a little bit. And and everything's very more, it's more quiet when praying. That's when the baby starts crying. Every time, mm -hmm. without fail. Mm -hmm. And But then there's other set, settings where you say, let's pray. And it gets really loud and boisterous. And babies start crying then as mm -hmm. well, but for very different reasons. And and so it can be loud and that's fine. And I think we can almost, depending on the setting we grow up in, think one is better than the other or God hears one over the other. Um, I know for me, I grew up in a setting that kind of really like emphasized or I thought it did anyway. I thought it emphasized like the like if you really want God to move, be loud. Yell at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much if you want god to do anything you gotta <laughs> yeah. scream at him <laughs> and that is the way it can come across sometimes and i was with this evangelist that i was working with and and i just assumed that when he prayed for people it was just this loud bold mm. <laughs> and and i'd been around other people and they prayed for people it was kind of similar to that and then i'm with this individual and we're with this, like, this ministry team and uh, traveling internationally. And this this lady like falls and twists her ankle. And have you ever seen like someone that had like a really like twisted ankle? And mm -hmm. it was almost like there was like two knots there around mm -hmm. the ankle. And that's what happened with her. And so she was a lot of pain. And this minister comes up and he just lays his hands on her. And he says, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And then the next person who prayed for it. <laughs> Yelled and screamed. Had to be the screamer. <laughs> no, I thought this guy was going to be the screamer. He just says, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And immediately in my mind, I thought, well, that was the wimpiest prayer I've ever heard for someone to be healed. And I'm not kidding. Like he took his hand away and this lady was fully healed. 
like bruising gone, second little not thing gone, like could get up, walk, full range of motion. And I was like, I'll be dead gum. God healed her. That's because the other guy was like, well, that's, <laughs> screaming that's because I screamed at it earlier. In the corner, right? <laughs> so, um, but my point being is that God doesn't need our volumes to be certain ways. And that's kind of like the point Jesus is making is like, hey, you don't have to stand out there like the hypocrites, like the Pharisees, who want people to see see them pray. They're praying these long prayers. They're praying these loud prayers. They're praying these eloquent prayers. You don't have to be that way. Just talk to God like you normally would. And don't you don't have to use all these these and thou's and... You're skipping ahead. I don't. I know. I don't care. And and so like, I don't. I don't think you, you know. You, when you're talking to God, praying to God, just talk to Him like you're gonna like in the language you would normally use. Okay. We want. I mean, we're okay. We're talking to God, who's the Creator of the universe. Obviously, we want to be reverent, but at the same time, I'm not gonna start speaking in like King James English when that's not my normal mode oh, of communicating yeah. the thou yeah. all that stuff. i don't have to do that i just talk to god the way ye old i would lord <laughs> right <laughs> and, and for some people i get it they may want to quote scripture while they're praying and they know it from king james right so for example this lord's prayer that i just said i just read it from the christian christian standard bible version other people would know the lord's prayer and go our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh, you're going to do the whole thing. Because they know, well, I oh. could, but <laughs> because they know it so deep in them mm-hmm. from that version. I That's how I know it, actually. And it's weird because. Yeah, that's I, how I know it, too. Yeah, and but that's the way I heard it. And so that's the way I know it. So that's what comes out when I say it. But it's not like I have to communicate that way or talk that way for God to hear me or for me to be more holy or whatever. So. I just think a lot of this is, it's like, can be personality preferential. Like, if, you, if you're a loud person, you may be more loud. But I think it's also cultural. Um, okay. Like, so I'm in this, it's really cool. Like, I'm in this um, this doctoral program right now, and it's a lot of international students. And when you say, let's pray, that means very different things to different people. So <laughs> for some of my... One guy starts praying, another guy goes to the bathroom. <laughs> The other guy picks up takeout. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe not that vastly oh, different. Okay. okay. But, but like when you say, let's pray for, for, for some in my, in my, uh, group, they'll all start praying simultaneously because that's what oh. they do in their culture from where they're from. They, oh, everybody like out loud. Yeah. Everybody prays together out loud. Okay. So when you say, let's pray, they just start praying out loud because that's what they, that's what they do. Mm. You have others, you say, let's pray. Man, they they stand up, they raise their hands because they're praying. Mm. And that's what you do when you pray. Um, you know, you have others, let's pray, man, they're going to kneel down. That's what they do when they pray. And then, you know, you got like the um, kind of the, the white, you know, American version. When someone says, let's pray, everybody just goes, <laughs> you know, we're going to mm. bow our head, close our eyes because that's what we're so used to doing. And... And so I think it's just, uh, what I'm, all I'm saying is, when we pray and let's talk to God, let's just talk to him. You don't have to do all the all the movements and all the volume loud. All, that doesn't matter as much. Just talk to God. Do we have to close our eyes? Do we have to kneel? Do we have to fold our hands? Do we have to put our hands in the air? Right. What was the other one? Uh... Right. Do we have to hold hands with each other? Right. Does any of that matter? N- no. Okay, well then why do we do it? Again, it's like all cultural. And there's, I mean, there's some biblical precedent for some of these things. So in other words, at times we see people, when they pray, they kneel. At times when we see people pray, they're going to lift up holy hands. And so I think there's like, so there's biblical precedent for some of these things. Um, and, you know, like, in in first timothy 2 he talks about men you know holding up you know holy hands in in praying and so I, there's biblical precedent for some of these things but it's not like it's required that you have to do one of these actions okay to quote to, to quote quote really pray um well the, and, that that verse that you read said go home 
and don't do it out in the street. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see. What, yeah, the one that so you're talking about. So are there about. things that matter? Okay, so I see what you're saying. Yeah, so in the in in Matthew 6, he says when you pray, you can go into your private room, which you're talking about, shut your door, pray to your father who's in secret. Your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble, you know, with many words. Oh God, don't tell anyone. But I want a new Xbox. <laughs> Right? Yeah. In secret? In, se- in secret. Yeah. Uh, no, well, so what he's actually <laughs> saying, Jesus is saying is, hey, you don't have to be like these, you don't have to be like the ones standing out there. Pray. You can pray, and when you pray, you can actually talk to God. This is pretty powerful, because this is saying you can talk to God like on this individual level, mm-hmm. as a father, getting back to the relationship aspect. You can talk to him as a father, relationally, and that's what the whole kind of point of what Jesus is saying here. But he's also not saying you can't pray together because okay. that's happening like even in jesus like when jesus walked on the earth jesus is still going into synagogues because it says as was his custom they were still going to hours of prayer in the synagogues mm-hmm. where there would be these corporate gatherings of prayer you see in the new testament in like acts one acts two acts four maybe we'll cite some of them later where they're actually praying all together as a community so it's not it's not saying you can't pray out loud together but it is so it's not like you have to go home to pray um and so there, but what Jesus is saying here is m- more than just the location it's about like what's going on in your heart like what is your motive for praying and and I'm not saying that you can't talk to God and be just mad as hell I mean sure you can um hence the screaming yeah, hence this, yeah, if you're screaming, mm. so be it. Because because you're mad, you're upset. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I mean, I've done that before. I can remember a time when I'm just letting God have it because I was so upset about something. Um, and so and God can take that, and God can settle my heart and handle what I say. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of things you were talking about, like all these different things, it's just again, it's just really cultural. So why is it so important that we always pray before we eat food? Okay. Instead of literally any other activity. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the one. Right. Maybe sometimes before we go to sleep, but people don't really do that as much as every time we eat a food near each other, we have to pray. <laughs> Why is that the only one? Why is that the only reason, the, the only, only time? That's the only activity that we pray before. Right. Unless we're, like, skydiving or something. <laughs> Let's for Scott diving. Okay. All right. So in first Timothy four. We're about to ch- charge the beaches. <laughs> All right. So let me read this. Right. And I'll hopefully give some context to why we do this. In first Timothy four, verse four it says, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. And just for the context purposes, he's just talking about food. Right prior to this. Okay. Okay. Um, and so for everything created by God is good. Nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, since it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. And so that's really where this is drawn from. Okay. Is the idea that when we're receiving food, that as long as we're thankful for it in this attitude of prayer, like this, or this attitude of thankfulness, then it, it's holy and it's good. I think one of the one of the issues that the early church was dealing with was the fact that now, because remember, Gentiles are being welcomed in to the into the midst of the mm. assembly, right? So it's now you got this mix of Jews and Gentiles, and they eat different types of food. Bingo! They were eating foods that were not allowed by the Jews to eat under their law. Okay. Okay. Under under the the law of Moses. Okay. Or the or the law that's given to Moses mm-hmm. by the Lord. Bacon. Bacon. And so and Gentiles are eating all of these different types of food. And so the context is, all right, as long as we are, we realize that God actually created all of this, it's all good because it was created by God, and we're thankful for what God has given us to receive, it is holy and it is fine. And so that's where that kind of attitude of let's pray before we eat comes from. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we still do it. It's it is to be it's pretty amazing that it's gone on this long. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's why we still do it. 
So it's not like a that that's never been a this is in the Bible, do it. It's just something that somebody did because they were not Jews. I th- I think that probably the origins of it, or the origins of this were happening prior to Timothy even or okay. Paul even writing Timothy. But Paul's assuring Timothy, it's okay if they're still eating. It's mm-hmm. okay if they're eating food that's forbidden under the law given to Moses. Like we like it's okay if they if they're settled in their hearts that this is okay to eat. Mm-hmm. But don't force them to eat something they're not comfortable with. And that's another part of this. And so there's more than likely what happened was there's these prayers that started being formed to say, hey, we're going to be thankful for what God has given us. We're receiving everything God's given us food-wise, you know, with thanksgiving. And then that tradition just kept continuing on. So were there Jews picking up bacon and being like, if I pray, can I eat this? (laughs) It probably, well, but you never know. It might have been that straightforward. I mean, I do think there was, all right. Paul in Romans chapter 14 talks about the fact that when we are eating or drinking or any of those kind of things, that it's all about a matter of faith. And it's a matter of, all right, if as long as there's faith involved in this, in other words, that God's given this to me, that it's good, it's okay for me to eat, I'm good, right? But if I was a Jew and it felt so against my conscience to do this, I just grew up not receiving that. Mm. That's okay too. And so Paul's just trying to assure individuals in Rome, like through his letter to the Romans, through his letter to Timothy, that it's okay if if you're not settled with this. You don't have to be. You can still choose to have your dietary restrictions. But at the same time, if you would like to partake of what the Gentiles are partaking in, there's no shame and condemnation as long as that's settled. You're you're settled there in your heart with it. Um, and well, everything so, I don't like eating, I'm just gonna chalk that up to religious <laughs> dietary restrictions. <laughs> I mean, sure. I thought you were gonna tell me on this question mm-hmm. that it comes from communion, mm. because we always pray before we eat and drink that stuff, right? And that didn't happen. So next question. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Okay. So how serious do I have to be okay. when I pray? Can I be sarcastic? <laughs> Can I, you know, yeah. talk like the cool wangsta I am? You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Uh, I feel you. I feel you, bro. <laughs> like how serious does it have to be when right. I when I talk to god okay all right i think in talking with god it's not like okay which of all serious like it's again have to be all the v's and the vowels right right doesn't have to be that but again we should be we should have a sense of reverence because of who we're talking to okay um and but that also i'm not asking you to change your speech i'm not asking you to change your language in the sense of now I got to speak in King James English language. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is, you're gonna talk to God in the English that you presently use. If that's you know, if you're speaking mostly in English and your language, and that's how you're gonna talk to God. And so I think there's a sense of reverence. I don't think I should be sarcastic with God okay. or sassy at Him or something. But you know, I think that you should be able to say, God. I just thank you. Like, it doesn't have to be like this big intro, right? It just, God, this day sucks. I need help. Like, he's not offended at that. God, this day is difficult and I need help. Okay. It's not a, like, or God, just thank you. God, I love you. God, I, whatever. Like, I, God, I need you. Or I, I think prayer doesn't have to be this crazy serious thing, but it is going to be reverent and it's going to be okay. in our own language, how we would normally speak. So, how do I, be reverent when I pray. I think, again, I think a lot of it is... Or is it my mindset? I think some of it is your mindset but and your motive. But, okay. I, but I also think some of it is just simply when, when I'm talking to God, I need to remember that he's, he's yes, he's my father, right? But he's still the king. Mm-hmm. He's my father, but he's still Lord. 
And I do need to be mindful of that. He's my father, but he's still holy. And so, and it's not that I come in with this, you know, fear and trembling. Oh, no, he's going to strike me dead if I say the wrong words. Okay. I'm not as concerned about that as I am just, okay. So when I talk to God, again, I don't want to use, I don't want to just. So I'm not like walking on eggshells either no, when I'm talking to him. No, okay. not at all. Like, if I mess up. Like, yeah, like, yeah, okay. I think that's one of the things, like, people are like, well, what if I mess up when I pray? Right. Like, what if I say the wrong thing or don't say it quite right? No, no, I don't, like, don't, that shouldn't be there in in your mind. Well, I, I never worry about that. I wear it the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to take me seriously? Right. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I, and so, but again, he knows our hearts, right? And so, in Hebrews, actually tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace. Mm. But that's by the blood of the land. That's like we realize that we've been bought and purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. So therefore we can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. And so there's, we can come boldly by the blood, but we do remember why we're coming mm. boldly as sons and daughters. It's because a price has been paid. Blood has been shed for us. And he is Lord. He is God. He is King. So I keep all that in mind. But yeah, no, I don't want you to like walk on eggshells. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's what I was trying to say earlier. Like, regardless of what's going on, you can just start praying. You can start talking to God. It doesn't have to be like in a certain situation even. You know, I can be in my car. I can be mowing grass, whatever. Okay. And that's fine. Do I have to like set aside a specific period of time in which to pray? Okay. Or can I just do it while I'm in my car? Yeah. You all right? I guess here's. Does it I, matter? I, no. Does God care? Okay. Here's what, he does one prayer equal more than the other? Okay. <laughs> no. Here's what I would say: is you can talk to God at any point in time. Okay. Right. At any point in time. Anywhere. In, anywhere. So I don't need a prayer closet. No, you don't need a prayer closet. Okay. But, There's a whole movie about those things. I so know. I was for sure. I you know. Your that's yeah. Your next yeah home we remodeling project. We all our clothes in one half of the bathroom so that we could have our our closet with the shrine <laughs> and the thousand crosses and the picture of bearded white Jesus. Right. Okay. Well, uh, there's so much I want to say to everything you just described. <laughs> so, all right. Oh God, we need to get rid of the pictures of mm. the bearded white Jesus. Mm. Now, we need to do that. Just you can't across. The... We bolted it to the wall. <laughs> It's in the house now. <laughs> it is the house. It is. Right, the right. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we need to get rid of all of those white Jesus pictures. Okay. We can do that. They'd be great. That'd okay. be awesome. We'll just color them in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I think we... <laughs> oh, God. And the shrine part, that scares me a little bit, too. Um, all right. But here's what I would say to get to, I think, the point of your question mm -hmm. is, <laughs> yes, we can pray anywhere. But I would say that just like Jesus says, hey, when, when you pray, go to your, he says, you know, go to that secret room, go to that secret place, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and some people call that a prayer closet, right? Here's all I would say. I think what Jesus is saying in this is, hey, when you pray, g give give a space, give a time where you can actually Pray and talk to the Lord. It doesn't have to be long, right? He goes on to say that. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be long-winded. God okay. already knows right. what you need. Just say it, okay? And and, and it so, doesn't matter how loud or where you are. It doesn't matter how loud or where you are. So yeah, but I do think having like a uh, like, a, like like all right, I'm going to regularly pray when I when I get up or when I go to bed or at this time of the day that I'm I'm kind of saying that as a discipline in my life or a routine in my life, a habit in my life, just so that it's there. But it doesn't mean that's the only place I can pray. So it doesn't matter time, place, or how loud you are. No. Lots of options there. Well, this is true. Okay, is there a correct way to start and end prayers? Because okay. everyone starts their prayers uh -huh. differently, and then they all end with amen, and everyone said amen and amen. Right. Or just an amen. Right. So 
does it matter how I start my prayer? Does okay. it matter which combination of God, Jesus, Holy Spirit names I <laughs> arrange them together <laughs> okay. like everyone does? Right, and sure. And if I don't say amen at the end, does he not hear me? Kind of like walkie-talkies with over. Right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. All right, so... Does he know I'm finished if I don't say amen? amen. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. And I, here's what I would say. I think more important than just than the amen mm -hmm. is the actual, like, that I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Okay, so definitely throw a Jesus in the front. <laughs> or somewhere in there. Our right? heavenly Lord Jesus Christ, Father, maker of heaven and earth, earth and provider of all things good and shunneth of all things evil. Then you start your prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, all I'm saying is when you go, when you look throughout scripture, you don't see amens just laced to everywhere. They're at the end of, of the bunch of the books though. They, they are at the end of some of them. Okay. Um, and, but mostly what you see throughout scripture is again, that the apostles or or the early church they're they're praying in the name of Jesus and they they're gonna phrase that a bunch of different ways. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of Acts four, um, they said you know while you stretch they, you know, now they're referring to him as Lord now Lord you know when you stretch out your hand for healing signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus, the prayer ends, and it says when they had prayed, and so you know even. Even Jesus' comments or, you know, model prayer uh, that we read just a little bit ago, um, it, you know, when it talks about, you know, when you're praying, you know, do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, period. Fair enough. Yeah. And so, yes, you will see amens at times, but no, are they I like, do you have to have an amen for the prayer to be official, for it to be accepted? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Absolutely positive. Okay. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing is we're just, when we're talking to the Lord, you know, and you mentioned what, like, do I need to have the right combination of words or phrases or call God or call the Father or call Jesus the right, like, what am I, what am I doing here? And I do think that mostly throughout scripture, we're seeing this idea of praying to the Father or praying to the Lord. Um but I, I'm not going to get hung up on things like there's I, I, Jesus, you know, son of David, have mercy. Right. That's fine. You know, praying, you know, I, I'm asking Holy Spirit you know, about every Sunday morning. I pray for the Holy Spirit to come and to move in our church. And so, in other words, Father, Son, Holy Spirit are God. Right. right? So if I'm addressing any of them, I'm addressing all of them. C Catholics. Okay. Pray to different other ones than that, I think. Right? Yep, some do. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's up with those people? And does that, what do you think about that? Okay. So without getting into this huge, massive. Um, we just fired up a lot of people. Doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just wanting to. You just, haven't even answered the question. I know it. I know. <laughs> people are on their seats waiting yeah. to hear what I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It could go either way at mm -hmm. this point. Um, without getting this whole big doctrinal thing mm -hmm. with Catholics, mm -hmm. do I believe that we need to be praying to anyone other than God? The answer to that question is no, we do not. Okay. And that's a pretty definitive answer. It's a pretty definitive answer. Okay. Because when Jesus came, he says, we no longer needed another mediator between us and God. Okay. We didn't, in other words, and, 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 I'll, and I understand the context of that in Hebrews is relating to, we didn't need a, we didn't need a priest. Okay. Okay. So we didn't need a priest to be our mediator, like in the old priesthood, between us and God. Like we have, in other words, we have direct access to God. We but come but are all the dead people that we pray to or that the Catholics pray to, aren't they priests? A lot of them are. Okay. They're saints. What's 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 that mean? Some of those saints were priests, some of them weren't. Okay. Okay. 
Um, so you could anyway. How do you how do you get the title of saint? Sainthood. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty big deal within the Catholic Church. Oh, okay. To be labeled as a saint. Okay. So uh, it's not just like a title that's flippantly thrown out. Okay. There's like requirements and all this kind of stuff built in to what it requires of someone to be a saint. Okay. Okay. But so without going into all of that, right? The, <laughs> the yeah, I would say we one we don't need a mediator. Okay. We don't. I'm gonna say need. We don't need to be praying to people who are no longer with us or people who are with us. In other words, I don't need a living priest to be my mediator, and I and I definitely need praying to the dead because Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are all still alive. Correct. They're living, but all the other ones are dead. They're dead, in the sense of oh boy, now we're gonna get into all kind of craziness. Never mind. I will do an episode on Catholics. <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> That's what I said last week. Right. You could spend we're, your whole life trying to find the definition listen. of a word, <laughs> and just keep going down. What is dead? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like you know, like this is the first death, the second death, right? Redeath. <laughs> there's, there's, there's too many deaths. Yes, there's resurrections. We have first resurrection, second resurrection. We we've, we've got a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on, man. That scares me. When I'm dead, I want to be dead. <laughs> I don't. Want... <laughs> you, what you want is just there to be one death. Okay. Yeah. Like one death, you're yeah. dead, but then simultaneously you're face yeah. to face in the presence of the Lord. Right. That's what you're wanting. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with prayer requests? Okay. Like, why doesn't one prayer, why isn't one prayer enough? Why do I need to ask someone else to pray for my thing? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so in other words, something's going on. Right. Why isn't my stuff good enough? Why Why do you need to do it? (laughs) Okay. Like, you're busy. (laughs) I ain't gonna ask you like Yeah. This uh, is my thing I can pray for that right. I got going on. Okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well I I think number one, it's part of remember we talked about this last week and the idea of the communal aspect of reading scripture. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to a much more broader understanding of just the church being or the understanding of, of community just mm-hmm. in general. And the church being a communal people. That's what I was going to say is I could probably, I wrote all these questions down and I was like, I could probably just replace every time I said prayer with reading the Bible. It's a lot of it is the same. And, and so there's this communal aspect. So when we pray, it's this idea, there is the idea of praying together. Mm -hmm. Um, And that this, because this is what we do as part of the communal group. This is what we do as part of the family of God. We pray together. We pray for things. And so, you know, when Jesus, when Jesus ascends Mm -hmm. and he leaves his followers behind in Jerusalem, then it says that they, they were, they were all gathered together and they were doing this one common thing throughout the time of Jesus ascending and the Holy Spirit coming down. And that was praying. We see in Acts 2, all these, you know, 3000 people get saved. And what does it say they are immediately doing? They're praying from house to house. In other words, they're they're meeting, and one one of the you know things that they're doing is praying together. In Acts four, John and Peter have been arrested, and they're coming back. It, they've been released. They're they're you know released by the Sanhedrin. They're out of jail, and they go back to their 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 friends, their peers, and they begin to pray together. So you see this common thread of people praying together. Um, Peter is arrested and it says that the assembly gathered together to pray for him so that he would be set free. And so from prison. So it's just this constant kind of communal nature of the church. Um, And so I think for, in a lot of ways, it was just understood. This is what we do together. We pray together. It's like we read scripture together. We're going to pray together. It's like we eat meals together. Right. And so these are things we did because we are the church. Um, but then I think there's, there's also some sense of we're connecting where we, we're uniting in prayer and we're asking the Lord to move together. We're asking the Lord to hear our prayers and 
and we understand that what we're praying is God, your will be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we understand that it's, it's, it's according to the name of Jesus. So it's in his name. That's what. <laughs> so why am I praying? Okay. If God's will is just going to be done anyway. Well, you're assuming that if you don't pray, his will is still going to be done. And what I'm saying is that's not actually the case. Okay. That for his will, like, so when, when, when we're praying and we're saying, God, would your will be done? Would your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven? What we're actually asking for is God's will to actually be done on earth. But isn't that going to happen anyway? No. Isn't his kingdom going to come to earth? Eventually, yes. Yeah, so why are we praying for it? <laughs> well, what we're asking for is for there to be... Come sooner. <laughs> well, and that is like a prayer in Revelation, right? Like in the last chapter of Revelation, verse 22, come Lord Jesus, come. Okay? And so there is that, you know, <laughs> come, come, you know. But what I'm saying is... Are we not praying to die when we're doing that? No, you're praying. Well, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well... We we'll also need to do like another episode. Dead once. <laughs> dead, dead once. Yeah. We're going to need to do some episodes of like the end times or something. Yeah. Just to throw our hat in the mix of the 3,000 things that are talked right. about on there. I'll even make my own like color right. coded chart. Okay. That'll be fun. Um, but I like the dragon part. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like the Antichrist who looks like Hitler. Yeah. That's always exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that. I always thought Hitler looked like the Antichrist. Hmm. Who wore it best? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Back to the original question. I'm not even sure what it was at this point. We're praying corporately. What was the... What, where were we at? <laughs> praying all together? Praying all together. Does it matter? Does it matter? So, oh, yeah. His will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got <laughs> Where are we going with this? Um, But, yeah, so I... Okay, so... Remember we talked about there's things that are like like Jesus is coming and Jesus coming again are like set things, right? Mm -hmm. God's set into place. But we're living between this time of right. Jesus coming first and Jesus coming again. And in between this time, we can pray for whatever we want. <laughs> we can pray in his name and for his will to be done, okay? And in in so doing what we're asking is Lord would the things that are of your kingdom come to earth now, come to fruition now? Okay. The things that you desire to come to earth, would they come now? And so that's why we're, that's why we pray. Okay. And we're asking because it, yes, ultimately his kingdom will come, right? We know that, but God, would your kingdom come in this specific space now, in this specific circumstance now? Would your kingdom come? And I think that's one of the great reasons of why we are praying. Okay. Yeah. Because his will is not just guaranteed to happen. There is a call to the believers to pray for certain, for, for his will to be done. I mean, Paul continually asks for the prayers of the saints as he's going about his missionary journeys, for the will of God to be done, for the word of God to, you know, spread rapidly. So it's not like it's not like if I get more people to pray for my thing that it's going to like you know with a keyword search it's going to see that you know <laughs> Nate wants new Xbox <laughs> is going to come right. up higher right. on the list if, if and I've God's got 20 people praying for yeah, that same and thing God's going to be yeah. like oh look I guess this is this is important right you no know? it's not like that okay yeah, I think it's, but I think there's a point of a, but in saying. Well, then what's okay, the okay, point? Okay, okay. <laughs> it's not like that in the sense of, it's not like that in the sense of, all right, I can get whatever I want. Well, that's not all necessarily right. what I'm okay. saying. I'm just but saying, like, that, right, so, what, what's the point of all, what, right. what's the point of more than one prayer for the same thing? Okay. So it seems to be, and this is part of the mystery of God. I'm okay. not saying I've got all this figured out, but it seems to be as part of the mystery of God. He says, when two or three touch and agree, Sometimes that's why you see the holding of hands. You asked about that earlier, actually, mm -hmm. the holding of hands. And it, when, when they touch and agree, on it, it says in Scripture, on any one thing it shall be done. Okay? And so if I'm in this 
position of like we're we're agreeing for God to do one thing, like this prayer of agreement. Somehow in the spiritual realm, it looks like there's a a a power that is that is moving in through our prayers. Mm-hmm. And I think part of this is understanding that we're not just praying these prayers where it's just like us and God involved in the equation. There is actually an enemy at play. Okay. There is actually a demonic host at play that do not want God's will to be done, that do not want God's kingdom to come. And so they are at, there is a spiritual war going on. And from one interpretation and one look at Daniel, for example, Daniel's praying and to get out of the pit. No, this is a, this is after that. Oh. Um, and so it was in Daniel nine. He's interceding for the country or for, excuse me, for Israel. Mm-hmm. He's interceding. And there is an angel who eventually comes to him and says, Daniel, basically, you know, your prayers, you, you kept praying, you kept praying. And you you were fasting, and your prayers over this period of time allowed me to defeat basically the enemy. All that right. was there was something going on in the spiritual realm. Okay, and again, I'm not going to try to understand all of this dynamic mystery of it all. Um, and so, but it seems to be when we gather together and pray in agreement, there is something that's going on in the spiritual realm that is evoking God's power, that is evoking God's movement. And it's like we're it's like through that prayer, we're actually at war with these with with the spiritual host of wickedness. Okay. Yeah. So part of our prayer, and I don't think we realize that a lot of times, part of our prayer is actually in, is engaging in spiritual warfare. People will go on Facebook or uh-huh. stand up in church and be like, like uh, I have a silent prayer request, uh, or they're on Facebook and they're like, Hey, can you pray for this thing? I don't want to put out on Facebook what I want prayer for. Right. But here we go. Right. So my question is, okay. because if they're not going to tell you what they want you to pray for, uh-huh. they could be asking you to pray for literally anything and all things horrible that you don't want to happen. Okay. So why do those exist? Uh-huh. And why does anyone pray for them? Okay. All right. In the church setting, mm-hmm. when people say, I have a silent prayer request, okay? Usually it has to Don't do- pray for it. <laughs> That's not what I was going to say at all, actually. <laughs> Usually it has to do because there's someone has got a circumstance in life, whether it be they've lost a job, they're, um, they have uh, come, you know, had a really bad diagnosis, but they're not really wanting to share it yet, or they're uncertain of the diagnosis, but they know something's wrong, they don't want to share it yet, or it's about, um, uh, or maybe sometimes they're just very private people, and they don't actually want to put out what's going on, uh, even though other people would be like, no, that's no big deal, but they're just very private, so, hey, can y'all pray for me? I'm, I don't really want to go into it, but you know, please pray. And like, so I, I respect all of those things. And again, I think when we pray, it's like, Lord, you know what's going on. You know what their needs are. And Lord, would you fulfill the need? And would your kingdom come and would your will be done? And again, I'm saying need, and I'm putting need in a very, in my mind, need means a spe- like specific things. So if a, a goth-looking person mm-hmm. came to your church, okay. sat in the back with all black, uh-huh. and looked at you and went, I have a silent prayer request. Right. Would you pray for that? Sure. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> Why would you pray for that? Because, it, all right, just because someone is dressed all in goth and looks at me and goes, I have a silent prayer request. Uh, okay. She may really love all right. Jesus. All right, fine. They're wearing a pentagram t-shirt. Would you pray for it? Would I pray for their prayer request? Yeah. yeah. If, if they have a silent prayer request. <laughs> I'm going to go, Lord, you know what they need, need being healing, food, shelter, clothing. Lord, you know what they need, a a job. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, would you answer their prayer according to to what they need? 
by your will being done. I have no problem praying. But that's not praying have, praying for their silent prayer request. <laughs> well, I'm not just going to come into agreement with anything if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Yeah. That's my problem. Yeah. You've never know you never know what they're asking. No, so that's what you're saying. You gotta put some guardrails on that guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm not praying for any of them. Because you never know. <laughs> it could be the nicest looking person, but they're praying that your <laughs> family gets run over by a truck. <laughs> that's what i'm saying lord would your, would your will be done here yeah yeah pray with the pray it with some guardrails okay some parameters yeah and, and a lot of times i'm like lord and if they don't know you let them come to know you i'm not doing it <laughs> you got to tell me what it is okay. that's fair all right well this has been the winner of this podcast uh you can find the podcast on facebook and instagram at when i heard this podcast and x previously known as twitter and locals at when I heard this, like, subscribe, share, follow, comment, download. Uh, Patreon five bucks. Joseph, that was fun. Yeah, man. Prayer. Prayer. Hope you learned some things today, Nate. I think so. All right. I pray completely wrong. <laughs> we'll work on that. All right. Yeah. I do it in my car That's and good. just say words. And That's apparently, right. you're supposed to go anywhere and scream or something I, mean, no. I don't know uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll talk there's too big a range of everything i don't know if i'm doing it right there's no i know you you want the <laughs> you want to be told this yeah. is how you do it when yeah. you do it where you do mm -hmm. it yeah you can follow me on facebook and instagram at nate robinsoff and you can follow joseph on instagram at rev joe t this has been the winner of this podcast and we'll see you guys next time bye <laughs>